on 891am and the ABC Listen app. You're with Caroline Winter on ABC Radio Adelaide, South Australia and Broken Hill. Of all the ways to promote your product, the most effective is word of mouth. 92% of us rely on the recommendations of our friends. Word of mouth is the most powerful form of marketing. Nothing influences people more than a recommendation from a trusted friend. Word of mouth. And we are talking books this week with Stacey Howard, owner of Mockingbird Lounge, of course, a secondhand bookstore and cafe. Hi, Stacey. Hi, how are you going? Yeah, good, thank you. And we're asking all of our listeners, of course, what are you reading at the moment? We'd love to hear your recommendations. You can give us a call on 1300 222 891 or you can text in on 0467 922 891. I need some extra books for my bedside table. Stacey, what have you uh, been reading this week? Well, so I read um, a book called Faithless by mm-hmm. Alice Nelson. I read this basically in one day, one one long Sunday, and I just read it from start to finish. Um, mm. Kept me gripped for sure. It was it's, um, so it's an Australian author, but set um, in her the characters' early years in India, and then between like England and France. And it's the story of a woman, and she starts as a young woman an affair with a married man, and this affair lasts many years um up until he dies which actually happens at the start of the book so that's not a (laughs) no no spoilers (laughs) um and so it's just this woman kind of reflecting on her life and her relationships and it's written in the second person which was really interesting you don't normally get that a lot Mm. in books so you normally get first or third person so this is this is a story it's all from her perspective then of She's saying, you said this and you did that and then we did this. And it's just such a different way of telling a story that you don't usually get. So I liked that. And um, the characters, they're both writers. So there's a lot of like literary references, um, quotes and poetry throughout the way they communicate. So that was really nice. Um, And then you've got some other elements in the story. There's a, a child... Um, that comes under this woman's care and there's a bit of a mystery of like who is this child and where does she fit into the story uh, so it it really was just really well written and such a great read I I, I think it you probably um, explained that really well when you said that you picked it up one Sunday and didn't put it down mm, um, yeah. how often does that happen for you when you when you're reading a book not too often yeah. uh, I, I do I do binge books I think like if I'm into it <laughs> I'll definitely finish it pretty quickly. Um, yeah, so but not not too often. That all in one day. That's huh. been a quiet day. <laughs> Absolutely, Alice Nelson. So uh, an Australian author. Have you read anything else by her, or was that the first? No, that was my first. Okay. But like, definitely keen to read some of our others. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. We, you've got a couple more recommendations to go. I am keen to hear um, from um, from our listeners. One three hundred triple two eight nine one zero four six seven nine double two eight nine one. Love for you to share what you're reading at the moment. All recommendations are, are welcome. Um, what else have you got on the shelf at the moment, Stacey? Uh, so one of our most uh, recent additions to our book club selection is. John Boyne's latest novel, which is called All the Broken Places. Um, I love John Boyne and I immediately, when he brings out a book, I was keen to get it into book club, bought 10 copies for our book clubs without even really looking at it. Then when it arrived, I realised it was actually a sequel to The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Oh, wow. Okay. uh, Which is a book he wrote many years ago. Um, And at first I was disappointed because I was looking forward to a new you know, a new John Boyne book and I wasn't that keen on the sequel, but I actually haven't read or watched the movie of Boy in the Striped Pajamas, but I know Mm. the story well enough that I thought, I'm just going to read this anyway, jump straight in. And it was so good. It was like, obviously I love him, but the book was so engaging and such a good story. And it stands well alone from the Boy in the Striped Pajamas, obviously, that there was obviously some references to the Holocaust and the camps, and um, but it was the story of uh, the sister of the boy in the striped pajamas, um, and she's an old woman now in England, and it goes back over her life from when the war ended 
um, until now that she, when she's in her 90s. And so she's reflecting on her life and but there's also current day things going on in her life as well. So it definitely stands alone. You don't, it doesn't read like a sequel as such. Um, and I would definitely recommend it whether you have or haven't read The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. It sounds like a good one. Um, is it a heavy read, Stacey? It's, it, it can be, yes, definitely. Um, but it doesn't, not as heavy, I think, as a book that is set primarily in that time okay. and at the camps and things like that. So it's more the, like current day, uh, but of course she's reflecting on those things that happen so those are definitely heavy topics but not the whole way through. Mm, sound, that sounds like a, a great read. I might um, share with uh, with you what I've been reading because it takes me forever to get through a book as much as I'd like to be able to soak one up on a on a Sunday. Um, is A Month of Sundays by Liz Bursky. It's a super <laughs> easy read. Have you, you read that one? I haven't but I, she's definitely a popular author She's got quite a few books and I think they all seem to be, have been pretty well received. Easy reads, but yeah. good. Yeah. And they're sort value. of nice identifiable characters. Um, this one's about four women from different parts of Australia who have an online book club and they all decide to meet for a month of Sundays, well, a month entirely, and each Sunday they read a different book that is um, has been recommended by one or each of each of them, and and it sort of just you know it's about um, their their deepest darkest secrets coming out amongst the group and the friendships that that blossom uh, from online to face to face. I guess we can all uh, identify with that a little bit, but um, yes, mm -hmm. an easy read I would say. So maybe after all the broken places, <laughs> the easy read is is that. Um, We've got a couple coming through on the text line. Um, where have we got? Oh, Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Durr. Durr? Would it be Durr? Uh, um, is, is that a familiar one to you? Yeah, I've, um, I spoke about that one earlier on the show, one of the earlier sessions. He's, he wrote um, All the Light We Cannot See, which was a really, really well-received book in our book club. So that was his newer one. And, um, yeah, that I really strongly recommend that as well. Uh, yes, Kath has said, yep, that's right. So Cloud Cuckoo Land and All the Light You Cannot See by the same author, both beautiful. So there you go, that recommendation might, might have been taken up by you previously. Maybe. Um, <laughs> and uh, someone else, uh, Arthur, says he's just finished uh, The Good Turn uh, by De yep, Derva McTiernan. Yep. yep. So she's a crime author and she's got a newer one out than that, um, which I haven't read, but I've read her first three and they're all really good um, crime, crime thrillers, but really well written. And I really liked all of them, oh, including great. The Good Turn. Oh, there we go, Arthur. So there's a, a second one by Dervla McTiernan. And if you uh, enjoyed The Good Turn, have a look for her new one. Uh, Mark from Normanville's actually called in. Uh, Mark, what are you reading at the moment? Uh, well, I've just read it recently. It's called The Book of Lost Words. Oh. Um, I've, um, uh, I can't remember the author's name, but um, uh, it's, uh, it's a fascinating book and it's uh, the fiction, but it's kind of a true story as well. Um, and it's about this uh, young girl whose mother died very young and her father... Um, is uh, part and parcel of the um, uh, they they run through this process of um, uh, screening words to go into the dictionary. Oh, fascinating! And uh, it is, and um, it's it's her life story and uh, the journey she takes and the relationship she she has with others. But um, uh, you know, in this room, she used to. Uh, because there was no one to really look after her, she used to sit under the table, this big rectangular table where all the buddy duddies, the old, you know, white male, um, you know, dominating uh, blokes used to sit around and and uh, boss boss others around. You know, there's a sort of like a pecking order. But um, it's really a fascinating story, and uh, I'd highly recommend it. Thanks for, yeah, for that. It's, um, the Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. She's actually an Adelaide author, so that, that's really been a popular book as well in our book club. Oh, lovely. The Dictionary of Lost Words. So, Pip Williams. Uh, thank you, Mark. Thanks, Stacey, uh, for clarifying that one. Um, 
Oh, we've got another text through. Sorry, I was just reading that as I was thinking. Um, recently, I've been reading the fraternity biography by Victor Marshall. It's a biography on the band ACDC Bon Scott. Uh, was uh, while he was living in Adelaide in the early 70s. Jimmy Barnes and Swanee were also in the band. I didn't realise how much they achieved. So many familiar Adelaide bands, venues and personalities. Unseen photos too. Very in-depth, very impressed, says this texter. Have you come across that one, Stacey? No, probably not my, probably not my thing, but... <laughs> I love that there's books for everybody. Absolutely. That does sound like a cracker. We've, um, we've been a bit parochial uh, today. Always love that. <laughs> uh, keep, it, keep it Adelaide, South Australia, or at least Australia. Um, you've got uh, a final recommendation. Uh, this one for the kids? Uh, well, I actually I wasn't re thinking of recommending it with kids in mind. I read it for myself. So, But it is a children's book. It's called The Grandest Bookshop in the World. It got me just from the title. I mean, how could I not read a book about a bookshop? And it's about a family that live in this amazing bookshop in Melbourne in the, oh, I can't remember what year it's at, 1800-something. Um, and it's got magic and it's got family and it's um, this story of, how do I tell it without telling it? Um, <laughs> it's the two kids of the family, they need to save the bookshop um, from this, a uh, magic kind of swindler who tricks them into this contest of games, of puzzles that they need to solve in order to save the bookshop and save their father. And um, so you follow these kids on this, these challenges that they go through and you're, you're sort of, you're with them there puzzling out these, these different puzzles that have been set for them. Um, and it, it's just, it's a beautiful book in terms of it's set in this, amazing bookshop that's also got a toy shop and a sweet shop and a fernery and, and oh, the, wow. the imagery is imagery is beautiful and it's and it's got magic and yeah I'd recommend it for everybody um it's probably like for a sort of 10 to 12 year old up um and but I would I would just recommend it for anyone like sometimes it's nice to read a kid's book and from the kid's perspective I just think it's it, for me as a reader, it frees me more. I'm less judgmental, I think. Always when I'm reading a book, I get so annoyed at characters when they make silly mistakes or they, they just do things I think are out of character. Um, but when they're kids, it's one way more forgiving. So I can just go with the story and enjoy it more. Oh, I love that. That's a bit of escapism for an adult to, to be able mm. to do that, isn't it? Well, that sounds like a lovely one as well. Um, text message from Christine from Prospect, The Angry Women's Choir by Meg Bignall from Tasmania. She says it was published this year. Uh, that's that's her read for the moment. Um, Stacey, thank you so much for all your recommendations today. I might just run through them again uh, for everyone. Uh, there's a few questions on the text line. So there was Faithless by Alice Nelson. There was All the Broken Pieces by John Boyne and The Grandest Bookshop in the World by Amelia Mellor. And uh, the... Uh, uh, the Dictionary of Lost Words, uh, a couple of people have asked just for that one again from our, our, our caller. The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams, it was. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, now you've, um, you've feathered my uh, bedside table with uh, books <laughs> to keep me going for a little while longer. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Stacey Howard there, owner of Mockingbird Lounge, of course, a secondhand bookstore and cafe with uh, all your reading needs for the next uh, few.